Well, I'm delighted to be with you today um, talking on this really, really important topic. Uh, I've been involved in some research with some colleagues in the States, Canada and here in the UK in the last few months, exploring what have been the experiences of Christian families um, during this time. And something which has really stood out to us is how uh, the majority of our participants said the most beneficial thing uh, from churches during the pandemic was the fact of being part of a relational community, the sense of loving and caring for one another, participating together and all that sort of thing. And I think it's really important for us to note this because as churches, we often spend huge amounts of time and energy and so on, um, providing lots of events and activities and programs, but we perhaps don't put quite so much effort into um, building our community. Perhaps we assume that it will just carry on, that there will be this relational community going on. But I think it's really important for us to really evaluate in our own settings, how is our sense of community and how is the relational connection and how can we enhance and build upon it? And particularly thinking about children and, um, and the, the influence that can be upon them um, from different generations, because there's been so much written about the importance for older generations um, in terms of supporting and equipping and empowering children in their faith journeyings. And um, it's, it's so, so key for us to be taking that seriously, because um, if we think about a child, they've got their immediate family who hopefully are um, influencing and supporting them in their faith journey, hopefully maybe their extended family too. But if we can expand that circle of influence so that our church community is also part of that um, influence and input and support for the child in their faith journey, then that's so enriching and, and powerful in terms of um, supporting them along the way. So we need to really think carefully about what opportunities and so we can create in our own settings for this. I think one of the biggest things is to welcome everyone to make sure everyone has a part to play, not always segregating people off into separate uh, groups. Sometimes there's time for that, but actually we need to all be together. We need to allow children to see older generations worshipping and praising. We need to help um, older generations to see younger children worshipping and praising. We need to um, allow stories of faith to be heard by all generations to inspire and encourage each other. And um, I think part of that as well is to try to remove invisible barriers, barriers that we're not perhaps aware of fully, but to really look and think what could the barriers be. So it needs to be a sense of dialogue and communication within our church communities to see what those barriers might be. I did some research about six months ago with Christian grandparents, and it was fascinating to hear time and time again them talking about uncertainty and often a bit of fear about what was and wasn't okay to be doing. They're very aware of safeguarding. So is it okay for me to go and speak to a child in church? I'm just not sure. So I think if we can have conversations in a very deliberate way, you know, these types of things are what we'd love you to be doing. These things here, perhaps not so good to so don't do that. Um, and alongside that, to create opportunities for quality time for us to be together, not always putting on lots and lots of programs and events and so on, but perhaps just saying, okay, after church today, we're going to have lunch together or go for a walk or have a games afternoon. And as part of that, we really want you to be connecting with someone from a different generation. Perhaps we encourage them and say, for two minutes, go and sit with someone from a different generation and talk about how your week has been. And then the next week we say, okay, this time, talk about something you'd like to be prayed for. And then the following week, talk about that thing again and see um, how, uh, how it's going and do we need to continue praying. Perhaps we could encourage cards to be sent to, to people from individuals from different generations. Perhaps we could encourage, you know, sharing favorite Bible verses, that kind of thing. And this is working two ways, of course, from children to um, adults and, and back the other way as well. And these types of things will help everybody to... Um, to be empowered in their own faith journeys that provide role models for our children um, in terms of seeing faith lived out in so many different ways by so many different characters and identities. And that is so enriching to a child's onward living. And um, also as part of that, showing that we care, we need to foster this sense of authenticness and authentic connection in our communities. I think this is not at all a quick fix. It's a long process. It's a process of changing perhaps what is normal practice within our congregations 
And that takes time to begin with. It can feel a little bit awkward. But I think if we provide some prompts and encouragements to our congregations in these sorts of ways, then I think quite quickly, it will become much more natural and much more part of the ordinary um, way that our church communities operate. And it will be so enriching and so powerful in terms of equipping um, children and all of us, I think, uh, in discipleship and growing in our faith. So keep going, keep exploring, keep trying out new ways of um, connecting across the generations.